Welcome to Medical Myths, Legends, and Fairy Tales. I'm your host, Dr. Alan Christensen. Look, you know that between the latest online fads and the crazy media headlines, it's easier than ever to get confused about your health. And you and I just want to feel better and live longer. We want to know what works. And we can't wait for further studies. We need to make decisions today based on the best evidence we've got. Well, that's exactly what this show is here for. So let's get to it. Hey, Dr. Cedar with you. Let's take a deep dive in iodine in supplements. So quick orientation, if you keep your iodine below 200 micrograms, you're less apt to develop thyroid disease. If you have thyroid disease and you can get your total day's iodine intake below 100 micrograms, there's a good chance of it improving. And we're getting iodine from a variety of sources. We absorb it from our intestinal tract, from our skin, and from our lungs, believe it or not. We get it from our food. There's some in water that's not purified. It's in medications, it's in topical products, and there's a lot of it in supplements. And that'll be our focus on this particular discussion. So what do you wanna look out for? Well, so there are iodine supplements. <laughs> and those, as you might, might guess, those are sources of iodine. And the amounts are completely shocking and totally inappropriate. There are brand names such as Iodorol that contain 12,500 to 50,000 micrograms of iodine per tablet. So again, your safe upper limit to keep your thyroid healthy is about 200 micrograms per day. So let me see if I can do the math quickly enough. So that top one that I mentioned is 250 times your day's upper limit. So no joke, that's a year's worth of iodine in a single pill. And it's a tragic thing. Uh, Those that have advocated for the use of iodorol have even advocated it for the use in pregnant women. And tragically, there are multiple cases documented of women giving birth to babies that have congenital hypothyroidism. These papers are freely available on the medical databases like PubMed, and they even mention iodorol by name. And sadly, they mention that the naturopathic or functional practitioners recommended these products against medical advice. So these things are not safe for anyone, pregnant or not, but they are out there still and they're on the market. So any iodine supplements, uh, iodorol, there are ones like potassium iodide, and there's many that claim they've got different forms of iodine that are safer. You'll see things like aqueous iodine, nascent iodine, whole food iodine, molecular iodine, organic iodine, Lugol's iodine, I can do this all day, (laughs) potassium iodide, SSKI, triple iodine, molecular iodine, iodine from kelp, ionic iodine, raw liquid iodine, elemental iodine, nanoparticle iodine, atomic iodine. I won't read the whole list to you, but those are examples. And I've seen all these products say that theirs is super duper different and it's, you know, made by organic angels and it works. (laughs) It's not the same. No, they're all the same. Every single version of iodine enters the body as iodide. There's no difference from one to the next. So any supplements that have any of those types of names are iodine supplements, and you want to avoid those. And the relevance is that all foods have some, and even if you're avoiding all the high iodine foods, you're still going to get 30 or 50 micrograms unless you're only consuming raw vegetables that are low in iodine. So yeah, you don't need extra in, in these cases. Now, we'll also see that there are thyroid support supplements, and some of those don't list iodine, but they have them when they're assayed. And that's because many of these supplements have active thyroid hormones. So how does this happen? Well, they will have bovine thyroid extract, which is a fancy way of saying cow thyroid. You might know that natural desiccated thyroid medications are desiccated, they're chopped and freeze-dried pig thyroid tissue and they've got active hormones. So a lot of over-the-counter products have cow thyroid tissue, and they might claim not to have active hormones, but they do, and the amount is completely random. They've been analyzed, and yeah, they've got sometimes more than medications will commonly have, or the same product might have none in the next pill, so they're all over the place. And the bizarre thing is that assays have shown that thyroid support products, even that don't list thyroid glandulars, 80% of the time, they include thyroid glandulars. So those are also good things to be wary of. Then we think about multivitamins. 
So multivitamins have iodine. Now, iodine is just tricky stuff to work with. It oxidizes, it changes, it absorbs into the air. So you don't always know what you're going to end up with. And this is the case with multivitamins. So in one recent study, 114 top brands of multivitamins, some prescription, some non-prescription, were evaluated by, for their iodine content. They took them to the laboratories, they bought them in the stores like we would, and measured how much iodine was really there. And this was done because researchers were especially curious about the role of iodine on uh, prenatal thyroid disease, you know, babies and moms developing more thyroid disease. And you know, women are generally on prenatals when they're pregnant, and prenatals almost always have iodine. So when they analyzed those, it was pretty freaky. Not a single product had the amount of iodine the label said that it had. Uh, the amount in prescription vitamins was not better than non-prescription vitamins. As a generalization, the products that had iodine from kelp were even more apt to be all over the board. And some products had three times as much iodine as their labels claimed. Several had four to 600 micrograms total when they were actually measured. So with multis, multis are worthwhile. There are a lot of trace nutrients that they're just cost-effective, pill-effective, easy ways to get, but you don't want iodine in them. And not only that, I would encourage that you should ask for iodine assays for your products, especially for multivitamins, protein powders, fish oils, or thyroid support type products. You should have readily available assays of their iodine content. You know, as, a, as an owner of a supplement company, we're always looking at raw materials and what can we use to make our supplements. And I've gotten in the habit of assaying all the raw materials that come in. And I've had countless times to where something that I wouldn't have thought would have had too much iodine had far too much iodine or some samples of it did. And that's enough to where we'll just avoid it. So yeah, you should expect to have those things analyzed. The basic principle you've got is it's pretty simple. You want to avoid supplements that have iodine in them. You know, you're working to keep your levels low and the extra amounts in there are not necessary. They're probably more than you expect. The one question I've always gotten is, well, what if you are pregnant? You know, do you need to have supplemental iodine then? And this is fascinating. There, uh, there's no consistent guidelines for medical groups that recommend for them. The American College of Gynecology doesn't recommend it. The American Thyroid Association says, without evidence of iodine deficiency at this time, the rationale for iodine supplementation in pregnancy is tenuous. And the American Academy of Clinical Endocrinology says that any considerations about iodine supplementation during pregnancy must be tailored to the iodine status of the region. They do not recommend iodine supplementation outside areas with endemic iodine insufficiency. That includes the United States. We are in areas that do not have endemic iodine deficiency. We are actually categorized as being at risk for thyroid disease due to iodine excess. I do see a lot of blogs and articles that say pregnant women might be getting too little iodine. But the deeper question is how much iodine is best for comparing not just about is there a certain number that we think is best, but how much correlates with the lowest risks of thyroid disease for mom and baby. And new data coming out suggests that we need less than we thought. There have been times in the past where iodine deficiency has been a cause of cognitive delay. And many have taken that and talked about how iodine raises IQ. Well, yes, if you were in Papua New Guinea in 1960s and your mom had iodine supplements, you would be smarter than if she did not. Or if you were in a remote part of China in 1990, those were areas that had endemic cretinism. So it wasn't that you became Einstein, it meant that you did not develop as a cretin, that you developed normal cognitive capacity. Outside of those two areas, that's just not relevant otherwise. There's no effects upon delays. So now what we're seeing is that probably 250 micrograms per day is a safe upper limit for pregnant moms. So only about 50 micrograms higher than that for general overall health. Uh, here's a quote. The risks of even mild iodine excess in pregnancy need to be carefully considered. The lowest prevalence of hypothyroidism, hypothyroxinemia, and thyroid autoimmunity 
as well as the lowest serum thyroglobulin levels are observed with women in the 150 to 249 microgram per day range. Now, mom shouldn't be deficient. She shouldn't be below 50 micrograms. She shouldn't be below 100 micrograms. But the question is whether iodine supplementation is helpful overall. So the Cochrane Review Group did a formal analysis of all known literature to date about iodine supplementation during pregnancy. And this was within the last two years. And what they saw was that mothers that supplement with iodine during pregnancy do have more nausea and vomiting. They may have more morning sickness. They may have higher thyroid antibodies. Uh, there's no improvement to the mother's risk for thyroid disease, and there's no effect upon the rate of preterm births. There's no benefit for the baby's risk of thyroid disease. And even preterm infants are also shown to have no benefit to iodine supplementation. So it can worsen nausea and vomiting, morning sickness, raise thyroid antibodies, but there's no clear benefit. So not only is no one advocating for it, but there's pretty clear reasons why you would not wish to do it. So in our case, we've made the daily reset pack as a multivitamin for those with thyroid disease, and I recommend that for pregnancy as well. It's good for pregnant women also. In terms of dietary sources, I do encourage pregnant women to have one to two yellow light foods per day, and that's part of the thyroid reset diet. So that could be some, some salted navy beans that are pre-cooked and canned. That could be a few ounces of prune juice or some salted sunflower seeds, uh, an egg yolk or a serving of low mercury fish uh, like ocean perch or shrimp or some short neck clams or a serving of hard cheese per day. But yeah, these are, these are fine ways to get to a reasonable target. If none of those are a good fit for mom, she can just start using a quarter to half of a teaspoon of iodized salt per day with regular cooking. It's an easy way to work around that. And if moms do have thyroid disease, they've got to stay on top of their thyroid labs because they can change over time. So iodine supplementation, not a good thing whether you're pregnant or not. Please avoid supplements with iodine and you'll do much better at keeping your thyroid healthy. All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care and we'll talk again really soon. Bye-bye. Hey, Dr. Christensen here. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode. Is there a topic you'd like me to cover? I'd love to hear from you. Just go to Dr. Alan Christensen on Facebook or Instagram, write your question and use the hashtag medical myths. Did you find this show helpful? If so, please take a minute and leave us a rating on iTunes so that others can know. Thanks much. I'll be back with you real soon. Bye-bye.